my five greatest stories. Number one. My first one story was by my, my beginner. Uh, when I started, I, I was a, a good player uh, in the junior level in Spain. I won one of the top uh, players in, in Madrid, in my region, and also national. Um, at that time, it was not easy to, to, to play tournaments and travel. Uh, there we, we have only two groups in, uh, in Spain. The, one of the group was the Pato Alvarez group, was Emilio Sanchez, Sergio Casal, um, Tomas Carbonell, and the other group was uh, the Luis Bruguera group with, uh, with players of like uh, Fernando Luna, uh, Jordi Arese, Sergi Bruguera. And uh, there was not any other opportunity, so people who has a good, uh, good level of, of, of playing to go outside and, and, and play internationally. So by that time, it was um, an unbelievable thing that, uh, that, that uh, impact me in the beginning was like, when at, at that time, if, if you were a good player, uh, it was equal that you were a good coach. And uh, then I started to teach, and, and, and uh, I like it. Uh, I like it a lot. Club asked me to. Uh, we cannot pay you anymore a salary, so you need to create your own company, and we will uh, we will give you the courts, and you manage everything. You manage the coaches, you manage the balls, you manage the the programs, and you you just give us a percentage of the money that you recover for the lessons, and then that's it. So I. I, I I didn't know how to do it. And then the, I was studying at the business university and then I asked one of my professors to say, look, I need to put on a company to manage this. I don't know how to do it. And then my, my professor said, I will help you. So he helped me to, to put a company on. So I started to, to, to give service uh, to the club and managing the tennis academy. We were one of the top uh, High performance centers in in Spain, and uh, at, by that time, we uh, all the clubs have the same program, the same problem that the the Rasse club has, that uh, they don't want to have people in the in the in the salaries on the on the on the club level, and they want the independent contract contractors. So um, a, a lot of clubs are starting us asking us to, you know, you are doing this in the Rasse club, can you do the same thing in, in our club? And uh, it was um, no education at that time. So I remember that uh, I started traveling. Everything in tennis was in the States. It was the Harry Hoffman Academy, the Bolly Cherry Academy, uh, Peter Burwash, Big Braden, Vandermeer. So I just say, I, I need to, I need knowledge about how to manage that and then I travel I travel to the States and then I start my connection in, in, in this uh, top uh, with top these top people I can point from the American tennis is the ability of all the people over there to share to share the, the information to share the knowledge we see the business and then we start to do courses for other people in Spain number two what was so, the Guinness world record exactly the record is, was the largest tennis lesson for the serve. So we put uh, 798 people in eight courses with coaches, and we teach them how to serve, and they must do a complete motion of the serve and put the ball inside the box. And it was a notary in each of the courses who certified that we, we did it properly. So it was, um, it was fun, and also we, we didn't expect that uh, big success that we have, especially in the media. I mean, all the, the Spanish uh, TV channels put in on the Sunday in the news, uh, 20, 30 seconds of, 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 that, of that thing. So uh, it was a big impact. So, and, uh, and- You still have uh, the certificate? Excuse me? You still have the certificate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We give a certificate to, to each coach and to, to each uh, participant in the in the in the world record. So it was oh, wow. it was a lot of fun. It was a lot, of, and we're still there. We're still there in the book. So <laughs> nobody nobody break break that record. So That's we are proud about that. It was number three. 
Could you please share with us your best story from one of the courses you've given over all these years? Uh, I remember the, the, the first year that I visited uh, Venezuela, for example. I, I arrived to the, to, the, to the airport and, and then I pick up my luggage and the thing and, and then, and then um, somebody who organized the course was waiting for me and then I get in, into the car and then it was uh, uh, in, the, in the, the conductor and in the front seat was a guy with a gun. And, and, and then I sit on the back and after I came inside the car, another guy with another gun. I said, what is going on here? I mean, I'm, I'm coming to do a tennis course. No, no, it's, all, it's only for your security. I said, oh, come on, security. <laughs> but you need to have the gun like this. And, and, oh and, 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 and it, was, it was unbelievable because at that moment, your body reacts in the way that what is nothing is happening, but it can happen in any moment to you. So I remember to go that to 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 to, to do that course uh, there in, in Caracas, but I have the feeling that something can happen to you in every moment. So your body is like in a complete alert. From the first, I remember that I I I leave my my room in the hotel, and I when I arrive I stay in the room. I I, I didn't have breakfast in the buffet in the hotel. Even if it was a five-star hotel, I stay in my room because you have, the, you have the, the feeling that something can happen. And, 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 and your body, I don't know, automatically makes something that prepared you to, <laughs> to be ready for something. And, and, and uh, I mean, and, and then I make uh, courses in Australia, in clubs in the middle of the jungle with uh, kangaroos and all these animals around the course every single day. A big impact for me has the, the pressure to travel to so many countries, different con- cultures, different people, um, different way of living, different kinds of food. I remember I was in South Africa, for example, in Johannesburg, and I, I, I like every type of food, but I always, when I, and, and when you go from, to one country, everybody will, they want to be nice with you. I say, Luis, try this, try this, try this. I say, okay, I try, <laughs> but don't let me know what is this. You, you tell me when I finish. No, right now, because if you tell me what I'm going to eat before, maybe I don't touch. <laughs> you may so, not try it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because, you know, something that in Spain you don't eat, uh, in China is normal. Something that in China is normal, you go to India and it's the opposite. And and I, I think it's uh, the, 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 the tennis career, wherever you are a player or, or a coach, I think give you a university degree. Because if you have the option to travel and to go to one part to another, you can learn a lot of, of all that situations. Because at, and at the end, today, the, the world is very global. And... and, and and that is uh, one of the education that I have uh, the most for me is to, to be able to travel and to have friends all over the world and, and, and to have different ways of living, of living in, 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 um, comp- in, in the same world because it's, 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 it's amazing. So, for example, that you go in India, and, and, and you go to the top club and then at the end you get out of the street and you see people that have not something to eat. And, and, and that kind of, 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 of impact, depending how you are educated, can change your mind because how you can be in a place with all, everything that you have, unbelievable courts, uh, the clubhouse, the gym, everything, and then you go out outside the, the you, you cross the street and it's people that don't have a piece of bread to put in the mouth in the mouth a day so the people is and 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 and, and i think that 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 way of of of, of see the world in a different perspective i think is an education that you cannot pay for it it's yeah, something very, yeah. that you must uh, live number 4 Luis, what would be your best story from traveling in Europe? 
I have a course in Russia who was to manage um, in Moscow uh, almost like 25 years ago, something like that. Um, and the guy who organized me uh, the course, the course was pretty almost full. I think we, we have like almost 30 people in, in, in uh, registration for the course. And then uh, four days before, the, the, the organizer called me and said, hey, Luis, uh, we got a problem. I said, what, what is going on? Uh, yeah, we have a problem because we have the federation who call every coach that we have in the course and tell the coaches that uh, your certification is not has that no value in uh, in Russia um, is is uh, nothing. I mean, it's nothing. So and the people are calling me and say that the federation is uh, they they call them and say RPT don't do that because it don't help you anything. I mean, they, and, and then the people uh, withdraw from the course. And I say, okay, so, and I have my tickets already by all the manuals we're translating into, into Russian. Uh, we have the manuals in Russian and in English. And then we have the, the hotel reservation already. And then I call the guy and say, okay, look, call again everybody and tell them to come to the course, to do the course. And the last day, they decide if they want to pay or not. If they don't want to pay, it's okay. And if they think that the value of the course is okay, then they can pay the course. So now then we did the course. It was like 27 <laughs> people in the course and then 25 pay, only two didn't want it to pay and it's okay. But it was, uh, I mean, our all specialty in Europe, um, the federations have the same business as the RPT. And, and, and at the end, what happened, the, the federations are losing the power. And at the end, they will lose the power. And the, the only federations that has power in the tennis industry is the federation who has Grand Slams. Number five. I'd like to ask uh, about the impact Rafa Nadal made on tennis and in, in Spain. It's huge. And I hope he will play in many more years because Rafa, Rafael is not only what he represents in tennis, that is very important because number one in the world, uh, I think uh, his legacy is more outside the court. Mm -hmm. He's a very normal guy. He has a lot of values, who is a great mirror for all our kids that they want to be like him. Not only in tennis, that is good, but only as a human being. And uh, this, uh, these values as effort, uh, respect, discipline, um, humil humility. Uh, I mean, uh, he represents uh, 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 a big impact to, to our industry. And uh, I hope that in, in, in Spain, we have also always good mirrors because Emilio Sanchez, Bruguera, Moya, Ferrero, uh, Correcha. I mean, we have good mirrors, but, but Rafa is in, in another level because he's not only in the tennis, he's in everywhere. And I, he represents uh, these values that I think they're very important in the society that we are living in. It's, uh, it's a good uh, lesson for the jungles uh, to try to imitate. And um, we have people, people like, with a lot of talent, like, like Kyrgios, who has a lot of talent. But I don't think it's a good mirror for the kids. Mm -hmm. I prefer to have, I mean, as a tennis player, he's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But as an overall, as a unit, I Total think package. tennis needs people like Rafa, like Roger Federer, I mean, people that not, they are not only good in, in the core, but outside the core, they represent the good values for, for life. Thank you for watching Tennis On Demand. Please remember to subscribe.